All right, it is post time here on Photo Finish Live. Major race. And the way they go here in the Pinnacle Championship. And it's King Roger from in between horses who shoots out to lead along with Akai Vileffi. And it's Molly Quirk also up there with the top trio. And it's FOMO again down at the rail. Back up to third, fifth place. That's Nero. And it's Franck in six here with about five to make up from the early leader. As they head to the opening turn, quarter in the books, 23 and change. We're heading five furlongs, left turning on the dirt, blinking it's over. What's up, homies? It's time for Friday night at the races. A little bit of photo finish live NFT horse racing on the Solana blockchain with the homie in the best race collar in the business, Mr. Mo Knows, the skeleton right above me. I don't know if Mo's back, but he went to go get some coffee. Are you there, Mo? Not yet. What's up, Big A? Big A, first in the chat, we got the True Stoner here, who is a OG horse racing fan. He's been playing photo finish live with us for a bit. And Big A and True Stoner, I'm excited to tell Mo. I don't know if you guys are interested in it or not, but I just got some information and it's pretty cool. We got the reveal date for the swoosh.nike, nike.swoosh reveal is going to be on Thursday, June 15th. So six days from now, we'll be able to find out what we got in our nike.swoosh boxes. I got two boxes of each, two of the old school and two of the new school. So I'm super pumped to be able to finally open those up and get the reveals. Mo's going to be pumped when he hears, hears about it here in a second. Shout out to Denny O.C.'s in the chat. Ahoy, ahoy, my friend. It's almost time for the first race. And the first race features our Dow Horse It's Joyride. That's why we started a little bit early today. Also, there's not a lot of races after 730. So we'll probably be ending around then. But we want to get in here early so we can watch Joyride run. She runs in three and a half minutes. I'm excited for this one. I feel like it's at the perfect distance for her. I was hoping it would be a fast or a firm track, but we got a yielding, which is not bad. It was 40% chance of rain. At least it didn't rain, but yielding doesn't hurt or help her chances in this, in that sense. And I don't think, oh, she is carrying some weight here against these B tiers. The B tiers looks like they won't be carrying weight. All the B pluses will be carrying three pounds. Oh, actually, it looks like we might be carrying more now that we have a B minus in here. So we're going to be carrying weight on this. But it is the perfect distance for her six furlongs. So I'm hoping we get at least a podium on this one. Shout out to Ronnie Lido in the house. What's up, Ronnie Lido in here? Oh, you're working, my man. Yeah, hang out with us. You'll be hearing Mo call the races. He's a great race caller. Our first race is going to be our Dow horse that none of us that are in our Dow all chipped in to purchase. And she got her first win recently. She's been doing pretty well now that we figured out the right distance to run her at. And she's about to be in this big race coming up with, what, six races, six horses total? Thank you, Denny O.C. says good luck on that. Uh, I know Mo is part owner. I think Big A is part of our uh, our DAO as well. Uh, Dane K as well. What's up, True Stoner says, hell yeah, I got five, two classic remix and three new. How'd you get five? I thought she could only get four was the four was the limit. Are you back, Mo? You, you. Did you hear the news? What happened? Dot swoosh tweeted, we get to open our boxes in six days on Thursday. Oh, baby. Swoosh I'm, party. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to pretend like I had something to do with it, but literally five minutes before they tweeted that, I had literally tweeted five minutes before then, I gave them the, uh, give me them details. When do we get to open it? Well, what are we waiting for? And then boom, they answered me and came through with the date it's thursday I, so i did it it was all me there it is no, just kidding shout out to all you, in the house this good job good game. job yep. uh this is our horse joy ride she's running against delta De delta down in this race which is a filly from high octane we got belarus in the two spot from oh no it's a hhr genetics horse that's one of the best stables in the in the game we might have some trouble beating that horse we got tiki torch which i think we ran against in our last race with joy ride uh from la hola farms we got cassiope I guess from Grand Ars. I don't know what that is. And then B minus Chabs Foley from Big Brain Stables. So it's gonna be our first race of the night, and it's gonna be our one of our most exciting races, at least for me, because this is our horse. Mo, you got any horses running tonight? I do. I have two horses in a race at six fifty one to sprint. Oh nice. So that's coming up in about an hour. Shout out to Ronnie Leto says, How do I buy in? What's the buy in? The buy in for our Dow was sixty bucks. We're trying to get another one together. We couldn't get all nine of our people 
uh, because it's just hard to get everybody at the same time. But if we get enough people, we might buy a second horse. I don't know if we're going to do it with the Dow and have a second Dow. I know Mo is in several of those uh, collaborative eff efforts. Maybe we'll start another one because there's several people that are interested. Free says he's interested. Everybody always says they're interested. Then when it's time to collect money, all of a sudden people stop uh, DMing us back. <laughs> True Sarner says he's got That's the first right. airdrop. Ten money. Let's go. Congratulations, True Is that the one on DC Palm? If so, I heard those are super scarce, like less than 300. All right, guys, it's about time for our first race of the night. I'm going to send it over to Mo Nose. We're going to try to get the timing perfect so that the call goes with the race. And hopefully we're going to get our first win, a chat winner with Joyride. Get a big win to start off the night. All right, here we go. That will be ideal. I'm going to count it down, and I'm going to refresh. Three, two, one, click. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, degenerates of all ages. It's post time here on Photo Finish Night the Races. We're back online, six horse field. And they're off and running here in the Hill End Allowance. Joyride, Vault Legend, runner here, breaks well along with Tiki Torch, then comes Bolaris. B minus chaps follies on the outside, follows by Cassiope, and comes Delta Dawn down at the rail with a ground saving trip here in the early going. As they head out in the back stretch here in the six furlong right turning affair on the turf. Track is yielding and smoke is good here in the hill and allowance. And it's all Joyride here in the early going. Joyride pushes clear by two. Here comes Bolaris and comes Tiki Torch now. Looks to advance here on the outside. Might have clipped heels there with Tiki Torch and Bolaris, but Joyride still out in front here as they make their way around the turn. Joyride carrying six pounds at three and a half to one. Cassiope there now fires up on the outside. Tiki Torch drops back to third. Delta Dawn's off the rail, but here we go now as we head for home. And it's Joyride. Joyride is trying to take him wire to wire here in the opener. But it's Tiki Torch has other ideas as Tiki Torch is trying to fire one up on the outside with one last push. And it's Joyride with Tiki Torch to the wire. And it's going to be Joyride. jippity yo yeah yeah You're going to win this one for the vault now over Tiki Torch and b minus Chab's Folly. Let's go. That's a chat winner. Joy Rad gets the win. Wire to wire. That's what I like to see. She always starts off on top. If there were one furlong races, Mo, if they had one furlong races, Joy Rad would win every time. <laughs> She's always in the front, but she held it off that time. Beautiful run. Uh, we got a kickback here of 1578. It was less than 500 to enter. So we tripled our money on that one. Let's go. Shout out to the, val the Vault Dow and all the homies that chipped in on joyride gets her second win let's go appreciate y'all in the chat let's go let's go yeah yeah it's fun when you win and it's a good way to start off the night Doing as well right. first race is a chat winner what's up c spill what's up led Jess? what's up the biggest bro i hope you guys got here to see us get our victory we are pumped up we're ready to go all right we got several races tonight we got a maiden race coming up next a nine furlong and then we got uh, actually two maiden races coming up around the same time we might be able to catch them both the first one is the kimono and that one starts in about six minutes. So we got some time before we get in there. Shout out to all the homies in the chat. Thank you for all the congrats. Yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Free says don't, don't blow it early. Like I said, Joyride always runs out there on that first furlong. She takes over on that on that first one, and then sometimes she fades. That's why at four, she wasn't doing too well because she would fade at two and three and wouldn't have time to come back. But at six furlongs, seems to be the perfect spot for her. You think we should just keep going at six furlongs for her, Mo? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to look at the, they got the new uh, metrics there with those average times based on the, on, uh, the furlongs. Yeah, on the charts. Um, I'm trying to see where the times were. Even though these aren't 100% accurate because the firm and the soft are all kind of thrown together right now. Gotcha. It would be nice if there was like a filter on there to kind of know like how we're running against, you know, soft horses, how we're running against, you know, firm horses, but. And it doesn't have a win that we just got on the chart yet either. It doesn't have that six furlong win on there yet. It's not official. Yeah, it'll yeah, it'll take a minute to go official, yeah. yeah. But nice. That was a good, great win. We got our first win uh, four four races ago on a four furlong. Then we ran her on a sloppy track, unfortunately. Seven furlongs. We got a second place. So I think six and seven is our spot for, for Joyride. But pretty soon, we'll be breeding. Wow, her. actually, look at four. 
four look at the look at the average speed of four furlongs. That thing is way above the average. Holy crap! Oh really? On the charts? I had even at ten, believe it or not. I know it's got two runs there, but wow, those said it's probably the four. The, the ten might just be an anomaly, but the, those two races at four, it's got the really high above average, and then right at the top. What exact I don't know if uh, those. chart are you looking at? Uh, scroll down to the one that says race time comparison. Oh, okay. It's all the way at the oh, bottom of that you. chart. Oh, yeah. So you got you see four there. furlongs. Mm -hmm. See, it's got that, that, that long gray bar. That's like the average. So that's like all the average of the horses. And then we're right at the top on that one race and then way above the average on the second race. Huh, interesting. Or well, the second dot. Yeah, yeah. Because she ran that other four furlongs. She might have just had some good competition in that run. Uh, but I want to see where she's at on this race that hasn't that she just won just a minute ago that hasn't been official yet and see if that's above average. Uh, yeah, 20 seconds till it goes official. Nice. We're going to go back and check that out. Then we got the Kimono Rating uh, Maiden. Maiden race coming up in about four minutes. And uh, if anybody wants to find out more about the horses or how to pick up horses, we're going to be talking about that tonight. We're going to be talking about some strategy. And Mo, you said there's some big news going on in Photo Finish Live to talk about too, right? Yes, sir. If you go into the old news page right there at the top, Breeding Primer. Finally got some uh, breeding info. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so we got our breeding window here. The Season 3 breeding window will open on June 26th. And uh, let's see, the stud listing window closes on July 2nd. So you're only going to have four or five days. Do we got any prices? Okay, so can you break down the prices for us? Well, you make you make the price, um, but the minimum that you can do is fifty dollars. Uh, if you're gonna put it on the market, it's gonna be fifty dollars plus the whatever it is, like twenty percent registration fee or fifteen percent. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so basically, you know, it'll cost whatever it is, like sixty bucks for a fifty dollar breed, and then you know you can set the price higher if you want. Um, but if you do in house, if you don't, you know, expose it to the market. It's a hundred dollar minimum, so if you don't want to expose it, you know, to the public, then you know you got to pay a little bit higher. That's interesting. That's something we talked about many times on these live streams. If they were going to allow private breeding, uh, in-house breeding, because on Zed Run that was really controversial. A lot of people wanted them to, and I don't think they ever did. And I'd, and they were kind of debating on whether or not they were going to do it in Photo Finish Live. But as you can tell, they did decide to do in-house breeding which a lot of people are going to like especially the big stables that means some of those bloodlines will never be public and uh, i mean it and uh, in theory some people are going to be like able real life. to yeah like in real <laughs> life some people are going to be able to just go way above everybody else and nobody's going to be able to catch them i mean that's just if they're that good then that's what they get i suppose all right let's check the chart now that that's official and yeah the six was above a little bit above average on that one so she's just a good looking sprinter Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's like my Joker ticket, man. It, it doesn't... Even with the three stamina, my Joker horse hates anything over six furlongs. Just hates it. What's up with but her on you, eight furlongs? She does fine on seven, fine on nine, but eight, she just hates eight. That's weird. <laughs> um, I mean, it could be a couple things. I mean, it could be... That might have been the uh, sloppy tracks we her on or something. Shout out to B.E. Yeah, What's that, it could just be the track. Yeah, or the competition. Yeah. All right, we got one minute and 20 seconds, so this one's about to go down. It's the Kimono made in a bunch of horses that have never won a race yet. We got Ringo in the one spot from Big Brain Stables. Diana's Albedo from White Cheddar Racing. We got Kramer. That's the dude from Seinfeld from Charlie Work. And Whispering Lunatic also from Charlie Work in this race. Nine furlong soft, so that means it's raining a little bit. No bets. I haven't seen a bet in a long time let's see if we see any bets tonight mo says that they kind of uh they all do that at the same time so that there's more of a pool which makes sense shout out to yeah Dave they try Dave. to like they try to build the pools in discord you know but uh, coming up soon i think um they're gonna start working you know maybe some like happy hour events or something to like incentivize you know wagering um yeah, you definitely they, want to advertise do that on the website, too, and not just the Discord, because not everybody uses Discord. But I do want to shout Dane K, because he's one of our members of our DAO. He saw Joyride just got another win, her second win ever. Let's go. Big chat winner, y'all. Oh, yeah. All right, four horses in this one, nine furlongs, and it's about to get, go down. So good luck if you're in it. We're getting ready to uh, refresh this and try to get the perfect timing on it so that it all makes sense. Last time, timing was perfect. All right, here we go. Perfect. Three, two, one, click.
Perfect. All right, race fans, if you like four horse fields, you're in luck because we got another one for you. Online here for the Kimono Maiden, and they're off. Out to the top here goes Diana's Albedo, then comes Kramer, Whispering Lunatic. Not too far off the lead here, then comes Ringo, gonna round out the top here as these four head out to shoot and onto the main track. In this nine furlong affair here on the left turn in dirt. Pass the wire for the first time. And it's currently the White Cheddar Racing making their debut. No fleet figure on the board, ladies and gentlemen. That's Diana Albedo trying to pop that maiden here today on Friday night at the races. And it's Diana Albedo here trying to hold on over Whispering Lunatic, who's now breathing down the throat on the outside. Kramer starts to pull up here, tries to find some room. Ringo, no change there, but now starts to split him at will. And right on cue, beautiful gray Ringo goes right to the front. This horse field is tight, ladies and gentlemen. As they make their way here down the back stretch, half mile, 51 and change. Ringo, current leader, but Diana's Albedo will not go away quietly into the night and surges back to the lead. A little bit of a back and forth here down the back stretch. Diana's Albedo now is going to renegade the lead with Ringo and Kramer still trying to find some room. And Whispering Lunatic might have called it a day. Three quarters and 116 as we head around the far turn. Around and around the track they go. Who's going to win? Nobody knows except the PFL calculator. But we don't know that yet because we don't click here for spoilers. But it's Diana's Albedo leading the way. Now by two and a half, Ringo there, Kramer on the outside, Whispering Lunatic trying to get back into it, but her and Kramer can duke it out here for dead last as Diana's Albedo is trying to set the tone here in her opening race past the eighth pole, and she's going to ride this one home easily over Ringo. Then comes Whispering Lunatic, who got back up for third. Two, one, four, order finish. Shout out to White Cheddar. White Cheddar Racing gets the win with their horse running for the first time ever with the favorite of the race and gets a win by a mile. That's a good looking horse. It's a good looking start to its career. Diana's right. Albedo. Second place was Ringo from Big Brain Stables. And then Whispering Lunatic takes third place. I don't know what happened to Kramer. Poor Kramer back there. All right, let's see what's going on. You can see our derby went up. We got paid. We were at like 1.2. We got 3.3, .3, so uh, I don't know if we're going to keep doing allowance races with Joyride. Oh, we got another race coming, coming up in about... Actually, that one went off already. Let's see. Looks like that one already went off. We got one coming up at 6.23, though. Oh, we got a sprint. All the right. Terracotta allowance in 14 minutes, so we got a while before that one goes off. Is that the next one you got, too? Uh, yeah, 6.23, then 6.30. 6.32, so they've got a little bit of a cluster here. So 638, 641, yeah. In our Dow stable, we got 783 crown now. When should we start using that crown and trying to stake it? Uh, well, this season just ended, so I'd say probably try to stack it up for next season and then try to get as much as we can staked away before uh, the foal start hitting the track. I think we'll see a lot more action start to pick up around then. So. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Photo Finish Lab. Every time, I think it's because I bend over to get my drink, I go fuzzy and I go blurry. That's all right. I'll fix it here in a second. Dan K says, let me know if uh, that's what you guys <laughs> decide and what I need to send you. Oh, to breed Joyride? Well, we did see it was 50 bucks plus like $10 uh, fee. So it's probably going to be 60 bucks, and we'll probably be able to breed like with really good horses for 60 bucks, don't you think, Mo? Yeah, but what you have to take into account, too, is that you don't want to just go right to the top because if you don't breed up slowly you know what i'm saying we're gonna get some weird genetic stuff going on so we're probably gonna want to find like a good a a plus you don't want to go to like an s minus you know what i mean but why not let's you say wanna... we got an s tier horse that has the same preferences as our horse and is three stars full on all the preferences and we have a a minus wouldn't horse. happen because there are no there are no s horses like that <laughs> well, that's the problem s -minus, then? or a plus i mean i would just go for preferences i wouldn't really look at the uh S minus, but I would go up though. I mean, if we got, um, but you gotta go up. Yeah, you just don't want to go. go yeah, you just don't want to go all the way price. up. But why not if it's the same preferences? Because you're gonna be mixing lower end stats with higher end stats. You gotta, you gotta build it up slowly. Is that theoretical? 
Is that That's way? straight from me. And this is gonna be a huge. Uh... Sorry, mid rip. This is gonna be a huge uh, interview with uh, him and MJ Gaming, Ian and MJ Gaming, going over all this stuff. But they they kind of touched on it on MJ's show the other night. Oh yeah, all right. We'll have to check that out. Shout out to Crypto Doozies in the chat. What's up, Doozy? How do you learn to talk that way? That's a good question. Were you born at a racetrack or something, Mo? No, I used to do that when I was a kid, though. I don't know. I just used to we used to run around my backyard with a bunch of kids, and I would be like, and I would so and so on the outside, and that, you know, whatever, like. Yeah, I can hear you having shit. one of those old timey New York baseball <laughs> calling voices. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> and say goodnight, Gracie. <laughs> this one's out of here. Oh, that, that's definitely going to be passed down through your genes, no doubt. Gang Gang says, what would happen if we picked the exact opposite preferences? Would that be a cheat code? I'm sure people will experiment and do things like that. If you only got well, you're going to have to go the opposite. For if you want to, like, flip the breed. So let's say you want to turn, like, a good left, I don't know, left turf. Well, there are no left turf firm. But let's say you want to take a left dirt salt and make it a left dirt firm. You would have to go the opposite direction, like, three, four times. To shoot. kind of flip the third preference and then shoot it further, you know, back towards three stars. Because if you take a three star one way with a three star with another, it's going to cancel each other out. And you're going to get a zero. But then the next time, you got to go up a three and you're going to get like a one and a half, maybe a two. You know what I'm saying? Right. But yeah, that's, that's how you kind of flip the uh, the preferences. I don't know if I want to do that. It would take a long time. Yeah, Dude. but there's no left turf firm horses. So, for instance, I own two pretty damn good left turf uh salt horses so my goal is going to be try to flip that over the first you know four or five months or at least get one into ltf because whoever whoever starts to populate that whole ecosystem there's zero horses in there right now zero do they have races then nope so what happens is my lts horses actually steps kiss um if you put her on a yielding track which is normally which or a good track she kills it Oh, yeah. Because there are no left turf firm horses, and she her top two preferences are way stronger. You know what I mean? Yep. So I try to find those like yielding or good for her because I know there's no firm horses in that ecosystem. Man, the prices on the female tickets have gone way up. I know we were looking at a bunch when we were trying to decide what to buy. There were a ton that were under twenty five. Now there's only three under twenty five. So those are getting bought. yeah, it's tough. There's only like a hundred and twenty tickets left on the entire market. I think. David told me the number the other day. Only 120 in the entire market. Wow. On the entire market, yeah. Yep. Sitting on uh, Magic Eden. Denny says, you need a catchphrase, Mo. What's your catchphrase? You ain't got a catchphrase? Get to the chopper. Bad to the bones. <laughs> really? That's an old one, bro. You went really old one. You went Bruce Springsteen on you. I don't know if that's that's accurate. <laughs> that's <Casey>. George Thurgood. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Close enough. DK says, what's our again? Let's turn ours into it. Oh, I don't know if we want to turn ours into anything. I kind of like what she does. She's good. She's got three stars on the most important preferences and two stars on firm. I mean, we could technically try to run her, or turn her into a soft horse. Would that be smart? Do soft horses make more? Are there less of them than there are firm horses on the game, Mo? Um, well, I don't know the exact numbers anymore, I'll be honest with you, because our good friend Steelheart decided to rug the community oh, yet no. again. And pulled Racer's Edge on the day of the new season. So, yeah, I don't actually know the exact numbers on that. Um, there are a few other sites in production. Uh, one of them I'm actually looking at, we might want to use. It might be something good to do in between races, too. Um, you can kind of sort it. Might be able to find a good breeding match for your ride. Okay. Let me, I'm going to DM it to you on okay. Twitter. Crypto Doozy says, when's the first race? We just had, we already had our first two races. The first race was our horse that we own, which won. So it was a super awesome way to start the day. And then we had a second race. And then there's a, about a 12-minute gap in between our next two races. So we got the Terracotta Allowance, a sprint going off in eight and a half minutes now. So we're just chilling and uh, chatting a little bit. And I'm trying to check out this new website because they used to have this website called Racer's Edge that a lot of people used to look up the stats of the horses. But it was community-made. And the person who made it, like Mo said, rugged it. And I'm, I'm assuming he was probably hit up the uh, people at Photo Finish Live and was like, give me $100 a day and I'll bring it back or something. Well, I think that's what a lot of people wanted, but I don't think what people realize is that that's, I think that would have been illegal. I don't think Photo Finish could financially back that site at all and give them access to data because that would almost make them like, 
with insider information. True. And I think he's also part of Peeb's uh, syndicate. So I don't know how complicated that would become. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I think there's a very good reason why <clears throat> they couldn't have like an official affiliation, you know, with Photo Finish. Yeah, he'd have to just monetize that himself by using some good advertising on the website and talk people into clicking the links, I suppose. That's about all you can do. Well, if you have majority stake in a track, um, next season, they said, you're going to start to be able to put up, like, uh, advertisements. You can sell advertising space or whatever. Dang, so. Mo. Whenever you have to put a, um, a VV or a OG Vault Friday Night Races logo on one of the tracks that you got some stake in, bro. Put up a big billboard uh, for us. Yeah, as well, some, whoever has majority stake. So oh, basically, gotcha. we'd have to find who has majority stake on a certain track. And be like, hey, listen, you know, unless you want your horse's name to be fuckbag and shit tard, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then you better you, know, you better put up our billboard. There you, go. <laughs> you know, like, you better promote the show or your horses are going to be getting some weird names when I call them, you know? To come up with a better uh, way than threatening them. Maybe we can <laughs> come up with a better deal than... I like, no, I like, I like nonviolent threats. They're fun. There you go. Um... <laughs> I sent you that link, but we could do here is you can go right to her firm, right? Like Joyride. Uh -huh. And then you can just... What, what was she winning at? Four and six, right? Yep. Yeah, so you can actually search the entire ecosystem. So like... Oh, that's right. Serena Star. Well, again, we have to, we have to make sure it's a cult. Uh, I was going to say, Serena Star sounds familiar for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big A just joined late. Did Joyride race yet? Yeah, Joyride race. She got dead last... Just kidding, she got mirror. first place. Ha ha, let's go. Chat winner. I'm trying to check out how to use this this website here. Okay, okay. What's what's going on? This is a little tough to... Uh, how does this work, bro? Yeah, this is just like aggregated um, data, kind of like sorted. It's not... There's no like sleek UIs or anything built in yet. They're working on it. I found the... Uh, but on the right-hand side, you can go where it says like right turf firm you can check off those boxes and then hit cult okay. and then if you just click on the furlongs at the top like four four to six or whatever mm -hmm. it'll sort everything by the um we don't want to search by your vault name but okay i'm a little just, behind you on the street playing, I was just i'm, I'm a little behind you so direction yeah, yeah. on that uh you said so like to look up left dirt firm and a coat well Is she's right four, turf four, firm isn't it oh no i think she's left left turf firm now I gotta double check that because now I'm confused. I could be wrong. So there's left. I don't know anymore, man. It's been a rough day, all right. Spider from Mars, Grape Syndicate. How did Grape Syndicate get a emoji next to their name? Are they special? Man, this I don't know about I this. Think I think uh, Racer's Edge was a little easier to to follow. Big A says first, yes, yes. Oh, it was a good race. All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can kind of tell how to use it. Does this tell you which ones are up for sale or not, or is just all the horses in the system? These are just all the horses. So what you want to do is you want to sort it, you know, by the distance that you want to breed at. So if you want to find a good four furlong, you just you know sort it by four. Like I think that's how you have it set now. Yeah. You can right. see like Monarch is. Uh... I just switched it to six. My bad. No, it's all good. I, like I'm a few seconds behind on the stream. Uh, trying to find, make sure that. Joyride is left. Uh, let's check it out. Joyride. No, right, right no, turf. Right, she just ran turf. right turf. Okay. Right? Yeah. Sure. Unless she ran the wrong way and she won anyway. Yeah, right turf <laughs> firm. Got it. Yeah, right turf firm. Colts too, right? Yep. All right, let's then, yeah, sort four. the four or six. I'd probably maybe six, maybe six, right? What does she run the best at? Well, we're still trying to figure it out because looking at those new stats, those charts you just showed me, the ones they just added, I'm thinking four could be maybe her best distance, but she just won at six and looked good at six too. So we're going to test her out a little bit. We got some time before we get to breed her. I can see Groot here. I like the name of that horse. Groot is the top four furlong horse. If we could breed with Groot, we could have a good Guardians of the Galaxy name as the foe. I like that plan already. Yeah. I don't really know. I don't really know if I talk to them much. What's that? I don't know if I talk to the owner of Groot that much. I'm not sure who it is. Big A says, Joyride kept first a whole race. Yes. A pole to pole victory. And it wasn't even a maiden race. And she was carrying six pounds. Man, looking strong today. Looking strong. I think I'm going to probably run her at six next time because she had just such a great run. 
I don't know, most thinking maybe four or two. So we'll see whichever is uh, available whenever she's not exhausted anymore. We can run her again. But then you saw breeding. We're going to have to start thinking about breeding. It's coming up June 26th. So that's what, 16 days away, about two weeks away, Monday. Yep. Then we'll be able to start breeding. But did you say we weren't, we're not going to breed her like on the day that it opens? We'll breed her on the day it closes or the day before it closes, right? Well, you got, we got to monitor the situation. I'll make sure we're all in the loop on that. Because um, again, we got to monitor, you know, who retires their horses, right? So if Groot doesn't retire and we have no access to Groot, we don't know what the people are going to charge either. True. Um, now, I do know RVA Racing. Uh, Pretty sure they still like me. Uh, Balloon Arch would be the horse that I'd probably say is the smartest to breed with early on. That's the horse that won the uh, the third time Derby back in November. Oh yeah, I remember that. That horse is insane, and it's running sprints now, which is crazy. It's, it's the number twenty six overall uh, four furlong runner. Nice. Uh, shout out to Drew so, Pears yeah. in the chat. Drew Pears, a member of our Dow. Yes, you missed our, our, our the Joyride race. She ran first right when we first started the stream. You can always back it up and watch the race, and then come back too, as if you want. That was our first race. That's one reason why we started a little bit early today. Also, there's not very many races filled up after seven thirty, so we're probably going to be hanging out for about another hour. And uh, check out some more races, including the Terracotta Allowance, which is next in a minute and a half. Let's see the horses that are in here. We got the Olympian Nectar from Big Brain Stables. Twitter Blue, which I'm a member of, from Elon Stables. That makes sense. Registry Company from Big Brain Stables. And Online Oath Keeper, also from Big Brain Stables. So Big Brain's got three horses in here versus Elon. But Elon's a pretty tough stable. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if they pull off the victory. You can check out the leaderboard before the race starts. Absolute horsepower is in first now. That's a difference. It was HHR Genetics. They moved down to third. La Hola Farms now in second. Big Brain's in fourth. And OEB is in fifth place. All right, 50 seconds. I'm going to put my money on Elon Stables. They always seem to win. And they always got horse names that are like Tesla or the Cybertruck and now Twitter Blue. Always stuff. That goes with their stable. I like themed stables like that. They're clever to me. I don't know why. They're endearing to me. Crypto Doozy's on the 1 3 exacta. Oh no, you took Elon out. You can't never bet against Elon. Twitter Blue all the way. I'm going across the board with Twitter Blue. I wish I could bet on these races. Most people can, but for my state, I cannot bet. But if you're into betting on the races and you don't want to buy a horse, you can get on here and pick your horses out and try to make some money betting. All right, guys, yes, it's race you can. time. What's up? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> like no any uh, we're about to count it down. Three, two, one. Click. All right. It is time for another race here on Photo Finish. Massive four horse field. And they're rolling here in the Terracotta Allowance. Registry Company breaks well from between horses and flies out to the front. Olympia Nectar there at the rail. Then comes Online Oathkeeper after a break of six. And Twitter Blue. Twitter Blue, what you gonna do here in this four furlong race? Blinking its over chat as this registry company now is instantly overtaken by another big brain stable runner. This is a big brain stable derby, folks. It's Olympian Nectar. Olympian Nectar now stretches out to take the lead. And Olympian Nectar down the top of the lead and opens up by two. But down the center of the track, registry company. But hold up, it's a white blur. It's a white blur with a blue name. It's Twitter Blue. And it's Twitter Blue now on the attack. But Olympian Nectar will not be denied. And registry company is going to battle back for second here as well. It's going to be one, three, two. Olympian Nectar over registry company and Twitter Blue. Oh, man, never bet against Crypto Doozy again. He called the 1-3 exact. I told him he was crazy because he took the line horse out. And he was right. 1-3 came in just in that exact order. You win, sir. You win. And it wasn't even, the, well, it was the favorite, but it was the long shot that got second. So good call. Absolutely. Shout out to Big Brain Stable, first and second of that race. Let's go. Let's see what's next. Uh -oh. Hey, Vault. What's up? Um, you, uh, you been keeping an eye on anything? What's am I supposed to be keeping an eye on? We got some Bitcoin pandas going on? No. You don't see my... Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Is that price going up again? 
Back to 460, baby. Let's go. Let's go. I just bought an orange one. That's oh, yeah? What are they at? I, I bought one for 113 about an hour ago. Shout out to VB Pooski's oh in the chat. What's up, VB Pooski? Crypto Doozy says, you owe me some cubes. You better talk to Mo. Mo's the guy with the cubes. I don't have a lot of cubes. <laughs> and plus, all my cubes are commons anyway. You wouldn't want them. Oh, I don't have any cubes. Like, I got a freaking common last night. You kidding me? I know. I saw that. Mo was live with uh, Cryptoids last night, and you can watch the replay on their channel if you want to check it out. We got VV Pooski in here watching some horse racing with us. This is Photo Finish Live NFT horse racing on the Solana blockchain. We already got a horse. Uh, we already got a win tonight with our horse. Tripled our money already. Big A says, in the past 10 days, I landed Happy Friends Secret Rare sniped two, a two-digit revenge poster and sold it for 255 profit. Landed both logos, sold everything, and made 1K. Man, I'm doing something wrong. I need to do what Big A's doing. Man, let's go. Congratulations to Big A. I guess I'm doing all right. I got the uh, red Rest logo for eight, and it's at like 460 right now. And I think that orange logo is only going to go up from where I bought it. Plus, my Lola 59s are both up. I bought those for 300 each. Last time I checked, they're at 450. So yeah, weren't people laughing at you the other day? About the Lolas? Yeah, I was like, y'all are crazy. Yeah. It's like the most scarce Star Wars collectible on the app. Are you serious? I don't care if you don't know who the droid is. It doesn't matter. It's Star Wars. I try to warn them. Yeah. Pooski says that oh, we'll... Uh, Go ahead. I'll just say, speaking of warning, okay. um, I know we were worried about the the mint count <clears throat> on stuff with the Nikes, right? The swoosh? Yeah. Um, have you been seeing some of the reveals? Because the highest reveal I've seen so far was only 444 edition size. Was it the orange one? I think was the no that was that was low, I think that was lower okay uh, yeah, it was yeah. the first one it was like the, 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 the it was a blue it was a blue pair called the invisible the OF one's invisible or something like I said I want to know what is the edition size of whatever has the highest edition size this one no right I know here? me too no I know I just I know we were speculating about yeah. it we're worried about it but it's, I'm just letting you know I've been keeping an eye on the reveals and the high unless someone else has seen higher 444 has been the highest min count I see and I'd be I'd be okay with that but. I'd imagine they got to have one that's got higher than that. 444 is a great edition size. But, uh, yeah, I'm thinking they're probably... Oh, I hope not anyway. I hope not, it's not some with, like, 5,000 editions. But I think they got one of ones, too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you got four chances. All you got to do is hit one. <laughs> oh, you were, you were talking about that with Grip My Coffee. Um, you were able to get five if you had the... The poster. The poster. Early access. Okay, that's You were fine. able to get the one plus the four maximum. Yeah, so... Yeah, Big A joined us late. He didn't hear the news. Uh, Swoosh dot Swoosh did just tweet right before we went live <laughs> oh, that Jesus. the reveal date has been announced. It's Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, I'm going live for that. I'm opening them all that second as soon as possible. And there you go. It's Thursday, six days away. Pumped for that for sure. Pooski says, BB's looking like August of 2021, starting to pump certain items, and then the store is cleared out randomly, like Hulk, just nice seeing green candles everywhere. It does seem like it's going wild lately. The, I think it was started with the Luke. The Luke prices pumped, and people made money off of it, and then they reinvested that money back into that app, and it made other stuff pump. So, yeah, you're not wrong about that. All right, I see Crypto Doozy is already putting his exacto bet in here, and he's going with Tunnel of Love. I don't know about that call. Let's see what we got. Eight furlongs. <laughs> And it's a good surface. So I think Renee's going to run away with this one because all these other horses prefer the soft surface. You got Serenity now is at S tier with 81 speed. You can't take that away. I'm going 1 4 exacta in that order. 1 in first, 4 in second place is my guess on this one. Let's see. I like uh, it. I like it. Let's see who. Quick question for you, though, before this race. I know we got a minute. Um, how many refrigerators does it take to get the red SR logo to 1,000? Refrigerators? Oh, you better talk to Randy Chavez. I don't know. <laughs> Talking to you, man. How many how many fridges does it take? What does a fridge have to do with it? We all know the fridge pumps things. You know what I'm saying? I'm... The fridge is the magic. Huh? huh? What fridge? My refrigerator? I don't. I'm confused. <laughs> Mo's been confusing me all week. I don't know what he's doing. This on purpose. He realized he just realized that it's easy to confuse me. <laughs> no, no, I story. don't. I just, I think I've been out of my fucking mind all week. To be honest, I'm actually losing it. Um, even last night with the the crypto thing, I was delirious. <laughs> That's oh fun. man! I like the Skeletor uh, costume you had. All right, it's that time oh, God, for the yeah. Bush Invitational. Here we go. Three, two, one, click. All right. Over.
contest. Stay at the track here, but it's time for a major race. Horse field all locked up. And away they go. And that's my night at the races alarm going off, but surprise, surprise, we're already live. They're ready now, though. Breaks well from the outside. Tunnel up there in between horses. And comes Renee down at the rails. E3 gonna head off into the sunset with sad eyes left behind. Out to shoot and into the main track they go. And into the first turn. And it's eight furlong. Left turning up there on the turf. It's a Secretariat Stables event as these three are duking it out here. And Renee, Renee up top now being challenged by Tunnel of Love. Tunnel of Love's going to try to go on by here and now takes the lead. Renee drops back in the second. Serenity now there in third with sad eyes. No change there. Still going to take up the back of the pack as they shoot down the back stretch here across the pond. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Serenity now back on the outside to regain the lead. Serenity now by two. Renee there on the rails, going to tuck in, trying to save up some ground here, but Tunnel of Love. But look out. Sad eyes from the back into the pack, trying to fire things up here, but around the far turn, and that might have been all that Sad eyes had. But Serenity now. Serenity now still shows the way here, trying to take this whole thing. Serenity now by two. Renee's not too far. Sad eyes now trying to battle that with Tunnel of Love. But this one is all for Serenity now. Serenity now up front by a length and a half past the eighth pole. And Renee is just going to hold on here past the wire. It's going to be Serenity now with Renee and Tunnel of Love in one of the most boring races you'll ever see here on Night of Races. Shout out to Secretariat Stables gets the win with Serenity now. Even though it was a horse that preferred soft tracks, I guess the pedigree paid off. It was the S tier horse. And it came through with the victory over Renee. And that's our second Seinfeld horse of the night. First we had Kramer. Now we got Serenity now. Uh, if I knew any more uh, Seinfeld characters. Oh, if there's a Newman horse. <laughs> if there's a Newman horse, it's over with. Uh -huh. I'm betting on Newman. <laughs> What's up, Noah? We're doing a little bit of photo finish live NFT horse racing on the Solana blockchain. And the next race, uh, the Lucky Panda claiming race. That's a Lucky Panda race is already going off, Mo. I think we missed it. It was at the same oh, time shit. as the last one. I think we missed that. I'd be able to click into it and have it run. I can if you, if you want. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Three, two, one, refresh. Yeah, restart it for me. Did it play for you? I'm at the photo finish screen. Yep, okay. All right, so we're pretty good. Okay. All right, online. No pain, no claim, chat. Rocky Panda claim the race, and they're off and running here from Shing Moon Racecourse. Doggy, Shing Moon. Heavyweight's going to break out to the lead. Franklin Tsai was there on the outside. And come Chopsticks on the White Silks and New White. Going to round out the top of the leaderboard here is this quartet. Another four-horse fair here, but they're heading ten furlongs, which means we got some things to talk about, chat. Make sure you like the stream, follow the channel. We do this every Friday night. Opening quarter and 25 change as they get ready to pass the wire here for the first time. Everybody wave to your current leader. It's going to be heavyweight. Heavyweight smiles for the camera here as he trots on by the wire. Then comes new white, beautiful gray. Chopstick there now, not too far up toe. Franklin's Tower sitting in last now, but... Might have been chasing butterflies, but looks to be finding some better footing here now in the rain and advances up into second. But still chasing the leader here in heavyweight. Heavyweight by five now. Then comes Chopsticks trying to make some room here down at the rail. Franklin's Tower back for third. And New White. New White actually goes right on by here at 3.33 to one. In third place for the three horse. That's got to mean something if you're a lotto player. But for now, back to the front of the pack. It's going to be heavyweight. Heavyweight, the early morning favorite here out there on the track at Shing Moon. Heavyweight, by two. Now comes Chop Six. So he's had enough of watching the tail of heavyweight flop around here. And now it's going to be Chop Six who pulls up alongside that awkward eye contact that we love so much here on Night the Races. And Chop Six going to battle it out. And heavyweight will not be denied and resurges to push back up to the lead. Now it's heavyweight by three yet again. 
just like that, things can change. And it's Chopsticks who chases yet again. Off the turn, we go, and we're heading for home. And it's heavyweight now by four. Franklin Tower is off the rail and looking for tail. But we're running out of time and running out of real estate. As it's going to be heavyweight, just kicking up muck in everybody else's face past the finish line. It's going to be heavyweight over Franklin Tower and New White. Congratulations to RVA Racing and Heavyweight. I see Drew Perry. They say, what's wrong with the picture? It's just a sloppy track. It's raining, bro. I mean, that's <laughs> just what happens when it rains. It's it's a poor picture. I can't. It's the weather. Talk to God. <laughs> I mean, if you were watching regular horse racing and it was storming, it would also be kind of tough to see. So it's realistic. It was raining, bro. Well, either that or maybe they're, uh, my YouTube every now and then goes to like automatic resolution. And I'm like, oh, why yeah, the hell true. am I on 360p? Sometimes you have to go <laughs> down like, to the what? settings and click it. All right, get your bets in, Crypto Doozy. And anybody else who wants to pick uh, the horse on this one, we got a lot of them in this race. It's a seven furlong. The condition is good. Keep that in mind. It should favor the horses that prefer the firm tracks. We got T-O-R in the one spot from Body. Dark Matter from, oh, not them again. We tried to figure this out last time. XCOM 8 Rub. Gunnel, I don't know. Uh, we got Lady Pound Cake oh boy. from Hazy Hills. Stanky Leg, do the Stanky Leg from Thoroughly Bred. We got the Saboteur mm -hmm. from Leith Maka Stables. Veronica Vaughn from RVA. We got Free of Love from Doughboy Racing. Cyclone Mischief is from I Get In Ya. Two Stables. She's a Keeper from Leet Racing. And Hypnotic from Big Brain Stables. All these horses have great preferences. This might be a tough one to call. I don't think anybody's carrying any extra weight. Let's see what type of race it is. It is a stakes race, so nobody is carrying any extra weight. Goes off in a minute and 30 yep. seconds. Who are we going with? Let's see what we got. A minuses, we got B pluses, all A minuses and B pluses. All horses that prefer firm. Tor's out of it. He's got horrible um, preferences and he's a B plus. So I don't think Tor's gonna be in the running. Veronica Vaughn is looking strong. First race it. ever, too. <laughs> oh, was it? I didn't notice that. Yep, you're right. Victoria. Yep, yep. I like Veronica Vaughn's stats over here. Let's see. Cyclone Mischief is looking good with three stars on all of them. Six runs, two wins. I'm liking Cyclone Mischief a lot. Hypnotic looks pretty good. Nine wins. Whew, that's a lot. This is going to be a tough one. I'm going with the... Uh, I'm going with the... 810 exacta cyclone mischief and hypnotic 810 exacta crypto doozy likes the it. eight what, what's yeah that? i'm all about that eight cyclone mischief man yeah yeah uh, what's the i get i get in yes two stables yeah. yeah that stable's been around for a while too they know what they're doing i like that name paired up with seven and five so eight and seven or eight and five you don't like the ten we'll see if hypnotic comes through let's see what the five oh the saboteur we call him the long shot there get the uh value bet on that one i like it i like it all right, this one's going down. Sunshine Go Coast Globe Club Stakes starts in 10 seconds. Good luck if you're in it. I'm gonna give you the countdown right about now. Three, two, one, click. All righty. Horses are right at the gate. And guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, we got a surprise for you. It is not a four-horse race. Ten horses, just like they used to do it back in the day. And they're off and running here in the Sunshine Coast Club Stakes. Hypnotic breaks best of all here from the extreme outside, then comes Free of Love. Stanky Legs trying to work one out there in third, then down the rail comes Tor. Cyclone Mischief in the pink silks rides along here in fifth in front of She's a Keeper. Top six here in the leaderboard as they head around the opening turn. And the seven furlong right turning affair on the turf. Track is good and smoke is better. Come and get you here on a Friday night with Stanky Leg. Stanky Leg holds clear by half a length now, but instantly taken over by Free of Love. Free of Love now pushes nose in front. Stanky Leg drops back to second. Hypnotic still there in third. She's a Keeper not too far off in fourth. Cyclone Mischief still trotting along here in fifth of between horses. Yachter position now finds some room, moves up to third. Saboteur, new name here, starts to advance from the back. Lady Pound Cake drops back with Veronica Vaughn. Veronica Vaughn, so hot, want to touch the hiney. Oh, around the turn they go, and it's free of love. 
being encased here by Veronica Vaughn, looking for that milk. This is not our milk sideburns, and it's Veronica Vaughn down the center of the track. This beautiful mare, look at her go. And now she pokes her nose in front. Free of Love drops back and might have called it a day. It might be Free of Love with Cyclone Mischief for second, but up top it's going to be Veronica Vaughn. Yes, ma'am, over Free of Love and Cyclone Mischief. Shout out to RVA Racing gets the win with Veronica Vaughn. I don't think anybody picked that. I was 8 and 10. Uh, Crypto Doozy had 8, 7, and 5. Nobody expected Veronica Vaughn, like Mo said, with that nice looking coat, the brown and white. That RVA. might be one of the most beautiful brown and white combos I've seen. Most of the, usually it's like a lighter brown. That's like a nice dark brown. It's beautiful. It does look good. I like the it's ones, though, like where chestnut. they got the face, like the white faces. Those are dope. I want one of those so bad. Yep, yeah, uh, Malibu. Um, there's a few of them. I think it's like three. We three got a race four. starting in three seconds. You ready? Two. Oh, shit. Uh oh, you ready? I'll give you a second. Yep. We'll refresh yep. it. All right, here we go. We're going to count it down again. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. Uh, I hope it was the Phoenix Fire claiming odds. <laughs> I don't know what race I clicked it to. Okay. All right, chat. You're in luck. Sometimes we sit here for a half hour, and other days we go on back to back. All in line. And they're racing here, and it's Susan breaks well from between horses. And comes Malachite, runs alongside, boomeranged out the rail. Snickerdoodle's also there, top four with George Yashi's horsey even. And it's Copper Penny. Top of the leaderboard here, but might have taken a bad step out of the gate. Tune in, we'll see what happens there. At the back of the pack's already got about 12 lengths to make up from the leader. Opening quarter in 24 and change, and here we go. This is a five furlong affair, chat, blinking, it's over. But Susan's up top now in the green silks, then comes Malachite. Another break of three after these two. That's Boomerang down at the rail with Sticker Doodle. Trying to find some striking distance here as they head off the turn already and head for home. And it's Susan trying to hold on. Susan down at the rail by two. Malachite's in full bore. But off the rail now comes Boomerang. Boomerang tries to engage the leader here into the eighth pole. It's Susan up top with Boomerang and Sticker Doodle with one final push for second now. It's going to be Boomerang up top. It's going to be Boomerang. Going to make a final surge here over Susan and Sticker Doodle. One five six. Boomerang, somewhat of a long shot there. Seven to one from Golden Stables gets the victory. Golden Stables was one of the top stables. I think it was the top stables during most of the beta versions that we were live streaming. Gets the win here with Boomerang. Susan takes second and Snickerdoodle. Some good names. I don't know about Susan, but Boomerang's a great name and Snickerdoodle's not bad too. I'll be honest with you. All right, let's <laughs> see what next. What we got next on the race card tonight? Uh, we got a few minutes before the next one. The Blue Mountain Restricted Stakes is next, and it's going to be another four furlong sprint. I also have a free Ooh, horse. race coming up. You got a 651. Race? Yeah, 651. All right, we got to make sure we don't miss the Harlem Allowance. It's got 11 horses in it, too. We definitely want to check that race. We should be able to get them both in. Um, oh, my God. You know what? This happens all the time, man. What's that? I, so I got like to make a series about this. So, remember, my horse Joker was originally Rainmaker in beta. Yep. Um... But then that dude, who apparently I stole it from in Beta 1, I didn't even know. He named his horse Rainmaker, and it's been running pretty well. Anyway, in this race against Joker, the old Rainmaker, I'm running against a new Rainmaker. <laughs> so, oh, I see it. The Rainmaker is in this race from Ice Yeah, I wish we could race for, like, pink slips or for name or <laughs> something. Names, you know, naming yeah. rights. You should be able to do that. The better horse gets the name. Yep, yeah. I walk away with the name. You walk away with nothing. This is going to be a tough one for you, too. Yeah, Clint Beastwood in here. Not only is he at S minus, he's got a great name. I got two horses in this race. I don't normally do that, but Ooh, this could be an interesting one. All right, we're gonna check out the first, the four furlong race first. It's the Blue Mountain Restricted Stakes. Since it's four furlongs, we should have plenty of time to get to that second race too. Yeah, and we got some yeah. S minuses in this one. They all got some nice stats, so this should be a good race too. But we still got five minutes before that race, so plenty of time. And I want to go back and show you guys the claiming races for anybody who's new to Photo Finish Live and is thinking about getting a horse. Uh, let me go to one that hasn't ran yet. Sometimes you can get the best deals by buying the horses out of the claiming races instead of buying them off of the market or getting them the actual NFT tickets from Magic Eden. If we can find a claiming race, I'll show you how much they cost. There's no horses in there yet, but basically people put 
horses in these races and if they do then you have the ability to purchase them sometimes they're 100 150 bucks in derby whereas if you're buying them on the marketplace i haven't really checked the prices on the marketplace it's a little tough to do the math every time but uh you'll probably get a better deal buying them from the claiming races don't you think mo uh well i mean you'll find deals either way um I claimed a horse for 180, sold it the other day for like 275 or 260, I think. Wow, nice. Yeah, so there's some good uh, arbitrage opportunities there. Yeah, yeah, and you know, like I said, sometimes you get people who just, you know, well, you know, they just they got too many horses. Um, yeah, you just might find a good deal on the market. You know, I mean, I sniped a horse for 25 cents. <laughs> Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, that horse that we just saw race, Saboteur, which has some decent stats. It's a coat, but they just put that, after that race, they just put it up for sale for 30000 Derby. How much money is 30000 Derby, Mo? A little less than 400 All right. Yeah, I'll have to figure out that conversion rate so I can do it in my head easier. Pair says, yo, Mo. I just do it in eights. Every day is just eights. 8, 20, 8, you know, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. You know, so so 1000 is... Wouldn't be eight hundred dollars though. One thousand derbies. Oh, eight. Well, no, eight thousand is a hundred. That's what I'm saying. So if I just oh, break gotcha. it in blocks of eight and just multiply it by a hundred, so if it's four blocks of eight, four hundred bucks. So thirty thousand is not quite four hundred. Like I said, it's like three seventy five. Yeah, three seventy five. Uh, Drew Perry's got a good question for you. You mentioned a couple of good male horses for breeding Joyride. What are the fees going to be? I mean, that's up to whoever owns the horse. Um, you know, I, that's why I try to be friendly with people um you know but yeah i mean it also depends who retires right like early on our options might be limited you know because some people might keep horses on the track you know try to make some money uh during the dark days of racing because don't get it twisted there are gonna be some dark days i mean we, we might even be doing like half hour 45 minute streams you know we might start racing some dogs and shit in the meantime <laughs> because the next 60 days are gonna be rough um but that being said there, there's gonna be opp opportunity you know, so whether it be breeding prices, but the, the cheapest price is 50 bucks. Plus a, was it a 15% or 20% fee that goes like straight back to, the fee. yeah, yeah, it goes, it goes straight back to, uh, you know, racing, like juicing racing and stuff. So it comes back to us anyway in the long run, but you know, whatever they get their cut. And so basically 60 bucks would be the cheapest, but you know, if you do it in house, it's a hundred that doesn't help. The Dow barn because we only have the one horse. Right. So. But that might cause prices to go up on coats overall because people now have that option, so they might start buying them and picking them up because there are some cheap ones on the market. And maybe we should if we find a good match. But then again, I'd rather save the money and just uh, breed because we're probably going to be able to find horses that are 50 bucks to breed with whenever the yeah, stud that's, market opens. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then we can just test different matches as well. Drew Pear says, who were the horses you mentioned? One of them was the one that won that, uh, what was the name of that horse that won the the Derby thing? The the Derby is Balloon Arch. Yes. In that race, he was called Dirty Water Dog. Oh. But uh, he's got the number 26 rating, according to this uh, this new site. Uh, and it seems to be pretty accurate, almost like a power rating type of deal. Um, but it also shows, like, average speeds and stuff like that. So, yeah, Balloon Arch is, is solid. Um Again, some of these other people, uh, Cossack is a really good horse. I think some of these horses also might be higher grade. Like I said, I don't really think jumping up to an S minus is that great of an idea, from what I understand. Um, we want to kind of, you know, incrementally go up. So take our strong base with Joyride and get a really strong base. Maybe try to go up like two grades, you know? Yeah. Not go up four, or try to go four and five, and then start screwing with the genetic. Uh, combination of whatever the hell is going to happen but yeah like i said we're going to learn more uh with the the breeding stream with mj and ian so doozy i was going with the same thing two five exacta was my guess too that's what i was going to say shout out to the two in the chat says i'm super torn between retiring my best horse it's a b plus and i wonder how popular b plus studs are going to be what are your thoughts mo i'm gonna give you a three second countdown and then you can give her your thoughts yep. him your thoughts okay three two one refresh perfect Good job keeping the flow going. I feel like they've been pretty on point. Uh, yeah, I think I was supposed to answer a question. Um, I forgot what it was. I lost my train of thought chat. I was changing so many things around. <laughs> All right, online. And they're 
up and running here in the Blue Mountain Restricted Stakes. And it's Retirement Plan who shoots to the lead. Artemis there in second. There comes Cossack. Just talking about Cossack. Just also reminded me this is a right turf good affair. So these could be some of our potential breeding partners, chat. But it's Retirement Plan who shows the way. Then comes Artemis with better the most. Cossack there also now dropping back here on the outside. Might not want to be our baby daddy. Our baby daddy's got to have some sweet feet and some moves to boot as they head around the turn now and they head for home and it's retirement plan but <laughs> like a horse out of hell with a firecracker up his chute it's Cossack he did not like those remarks ladies and gentlemen and it's going to be Cossack who kicks clear quickly over better than most and Artemis yeah, I just completely I'll... insulted that horse uh, <laughs> yeah, we have that other race coming up too yep, not at all <laughs> what I expected there uh, let's give the shout out to the winner real quick whenever it pops up on wow. the screen. Who was it? Osic from uh, Big Brain. Big Brain Stables gets the win. Shout out to Big Brain Stables. Let's get ready for the next race. And the question that was asked by Latuda to you was about their best horse is a B-plus horse. And they're trying to decide if they should retire it. And they're wondering how popular B-plus studs are going to be. What do you think, Mo? Oh, um, honestly, I think, I think a lot of b I think the B's might be more sought after than the A's just because there's less of them. Um, like, my boy named Sue has got, like, five wins, kicking ass, you know what I'm saying? And we could probably make some breeding money. Um, but if that horse was an A-, minus, I don't think it would be that good of a breeder. There's way more horses at that competition. All right, it's race so time. It might, be, Three, it might be worth it. Two, one, click. All right, here we go. Back at the track, Jack, and we got two running in this one, ladies and gentlemen. Online here, five furlongs, 12 horse field. And they're up and running, make that 11. It's A. Lena who breaks well, then comes Clint Beastwood, firm yet fun right there with rugged Forrester. Kill Swish rides along here on the extreme outside in fifth with Eggs Benny. I don't see any of my damn horses out here, but hopefully that'll change as we start to make our way down the, the stretch here. But this is a short race, so I am already worried. Around the, <laughs> around the turn we go, and it's now Killswitch who pushes away in front. And it's firm yet fun, tries to battle back from the inside and takes the lead. Ruggis Forrester down at the rail, Alina there. And comes Rainmaker. I just realized that's not my Rainmaker, but here comes Odds on Lightning. I do own that one. But around the turn we go, and it's firm yet fun. Firm yet fun, not done, son, but trying to kick him home. With Rugged Forrester, then comes Odds on Lightning. On the outside, it's Arcturus, and Joker is trying to sneak in between. But as it's Rugged Forrester with Firm yet fun, Odds on Lightning there as they try to push to the wire here. I just want to get up and make some money, maybe second place, but it's not going to happen. Oh, and it's going to be Rugged Forrester who's going to take it over. Firm yet fun and Odds on Lightning. Ruggest Forrester from Big Brain Stables gets the win. That was a big time long shot. How did you call that crypto doozy? Doozy is calling him today. He said the one horse is going to win it. It was the long eh, shot by he's far. Probably refreshing. And that's it. Listen, if people are doing that, it's kind of. <laughs> is that what you're dumb. doing? Did you I don't know. I, I, maybe maybe he's got lucky. I don't know. All right. But if people are doing that, we're gonna. I'm just gonna start hiding chat because we don't <laughs> need. He refreshed. Need to do that he got shit. the he got the uh, results back before they actually happened. That's the conspiracy theory now happened because you're doing so well, Doozy. I don't know how you called that one, but you were right. The one horse ran away with it, <laughs> even though he was the. Maybe last he was guy. calling about the last race. Maybe he was talking about a race that just happened. We don't even know. <laughs> Maybe. But I would hope that you know people in chat would be better than that, and do you, you know the, the everybody have some fun. Do you get the Tahoe restricted stakes next, also? Uh, yeah, seven ten. Man, what's what's with all of these races being four to seven furlongs? Are they people not running the long distance races anymore? Oh, yo, Crypto Dudes, he's just a photo finish genius. He's okay, just he's just calling need, them. You need to put some money. Yo, on we need to start betting Crypto Dudes. Give me the next one because I'm gonna put some money on it. Yeah, the next Chase race is there another with his son. four furlongs. <laughs> It's picking horses, hey, that's awesome. That's cool. But yeah, that's good stuff. All right, if anybody wants to uh, create an account and they haven't created an account already, if you do, you get a free horse. You get to, It's called a trainer horse. I got my trainer horse. I called him Rug Pool. He is a rug pool. He hasn't got better than sixth place yet. 
man, I don't know why. I'm running my all different distances. I'll throw him in to do another race, but he's just going to get his butt kicked again. But some people have been kicking some butts. They've had some good uh, results with their horse that they got for free when they signed up. And if you, uh, if you win some of those free horse tournaments, you could possibly win derby to put towards a horse and they have other competitions i think they even give away actual horses sometimes if your free horse wins so you guys even if you're not wanting to put any money into the game but you just want to play for free that's one way to do it right there and i like that a lot the fact that they added that oh yeah you know what i like i like the fact that not only did odds on lightning my horse beat rainmaker <laughs> joker beat rainmaker and i feel good about that even though joker didn't hit the money I actually lost uh, 500 Derby on that race, technically, but I got back double the crown because I had two entries. Nice. So I'm at 86 crown to stack away for next month on staking. Uh, I'm currently already up to like 30 bucks in uh, Derby kickback for nice. this month, and Earnest we still have yeah, we still have like another month to go. <laughs> Well, what's story month? on this odds on lightning? I've heard of this horse before. It looks like it's only ran five times and it's already podiumed four times. How'd you get that horse? Uh using my using my what I thought was a good ticket strategy. Um, I, I've been wrong on some, but yeah, uh, yeah, odds on lightning. I just happened to see me and my uncle split this horse. Yeah, it's been running really, really well, man. Yeah, it's a good looking horse. Looks like it's got some nice. Uh, what are they called? Uh, fleet figures, 78 at 5 furlongs. I see you just been running at 5 and 6. I'm not really testing it, but it's been doing well at 5, so why move it? Yeah, it's got a 1 stam. Like, I've been trying to kind of target the 330 tickets. Because um, I'm kind of thinking if I don't want to breed up... I want to be careful breeding up, too. Uh, I don't really want to race against Peeb and Wolof and David with his best horses. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. I don't really know if I want to move up and be fighting these guys every day so if i can kind of stay parallel you know what i'm saying so <clears throat> i know temper has something to do with the race how they interact I don't even know if i fully buy that <laughs> i think there might be a hidden gene there that we don't see but apparently with breeding people were saying that in beta so we'll see so if that affects like breeding up or breeding down i don't really mind the horse with zero temper if it means like i just breed the same level and don't really breed up as high you know so, yeah, I'd be okay with that. Kind of hope that it isn't what temper does, because I don't know, I wouldn't like that. Because I usually don't worry about that stat too much. I usually go for horses that don't have good temper. Although I don't know for sure what Joyride looked like. I forget, but I know she had really good, uh, really good speed out the gate, and that's that's what I want to match her up with whenever we breed or somebody another horse that had a really good one furlong, so that we can stay strong at the beginning of the race and runner in sprints probably. Yep. That's the plan. Yeah, anyway. and you know. As time goes on, like I said, if you breed, because there is, there's eight, like there's eight, um, I guess, attributes, right? Right. Six of them we see, two of them we don't, right? So that's, that's where like the whole, you know, theory crafting comes in where people, you know, like, well, maybe it means this, maybe it means that, you know, so. <coughs> Excuse me. Noah says, what is your logo sell point? Mo, when should I sell my logo? That's a good question. I'm going 1K for me. 1K and I buy a horse and name it Logo. So you have a red logo? Oh, yeah, yeah. How'd you get it? Did you get off the drop? drop. Or... Oh, drop, nice. Yeah. Let's go. Bro, you don't remember? Bro, bro, I tell you, like, we didn't really talk to him. I know we had a really packed show with uh, Cavell on, right? Yeah. Um, dude, that, that whole experience was insane. Like, oh, I yeah, hate... I, about... I, was saying, I, I can't even say I hate VB anymore because I don't hate... I've never hated VB. I just like giving him a long time. But, you know... When that drop happened and I got in with the reservation, right, or the wait list, and then every time I went, because I went to go add gems after I got the, the thing, right, because right. I had five minutes, and every time I went to add gems, it came up with my master collector points. And I was like, it just the black overlay where it's like, you know, touch here to continue, and I'm like, I don't care about the MCP right now. Just get me past the freaking screen so I can find my gems and get the damn logo, right? Oh, man. So anyway, I wound up just getting them on the computer and then doing it on mobile and doing the, the transaction. And yeah, I got the secret rare. So I don't know. I, I said a thousand. That's well, why I said how many refrigerators does it take to pump it to a thousand? Because oh, okay. it's going to happen. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, you're not the only person that was having that exact same issue, and some people weren't able to get theirs. They uh, they didn't do what you did. Of course, you uh, towards troubleshooting, I guess, and you came up with the result, the right result, and got the secret rare. And y'all hear him, man? He was hating on VB, then he gets a secret rare, and now he's like, I don't hate VB, I love VB. Can you believe that? One I've never hated rare. on VB. I can't stand management. I've said it. That's why, you know, that's why that, that conversation with Cavell was really cool for me, because, you know, so many people have been burned, right? You don't really, I don't talk to a lot of these people, you know? But I think, like, you know, and you know the same shit. Like, the IP, man. If that IP is there and they have a use case for it, it'll it'll outweigh the the, the poor management, right? Like, I don't know. I, whether or not I like anybody that runs the show, I don't really think it... I, don't, I think it's irrelevant. Because until another platform gets, you know, Disney and Marvel, then they, they're going to be the leader. Well, and I think Bob Iger was just on stage with some shit. And I thought this was kind of interesting. Maybe we can save it for butters, but... You know, they showed Bob Iger with all the golden moments around him up on stage for, like, one of these conferences. Oh, yeah? Not a single mention, not a single VV logo, nothing. And I was like, that's kind of weird. I thought that was really weird. It is weird, but I do like the fact that during the Apple Vision Pro presentation that they had all this Disney stuff. So it looks like Disney is working on a metaverse. And if their oh, yeah. CEO has those NFTs, the Disney Golden Moments from VV, hopefully there's some type of uh, interaction there with holding those VV NFTs. Disney NFTs will give you some type of bonus or access to some type of special experience in the Disney metaverse. And if so, that's utility. And that's going to not only add value to those NFTs, but it's going to introduce Disney fans that didn't know about VV to VV. But I want to get to the chat. I see Flo ILVs in the chat. What's up, Flo? Says Jim Lee is on the DC Discord. If you guys have some questions for him, Superman number one holders made some noise in there. Yeah, people are upset, uh, Superman number one holders, because this new drop system that they're doing is including some re-releases of some comics, including Superman number one. So it's going to be... Where do we... Did there, where is that confirmation? I, I got, I'm out of the loop on a lot of this stuff sometimes. Where is the confirmation that they're re-releases and then Superman number one? I didn't I didn't get that memo. But again, I'm not saying I know, but I'm just curious. Like, where the hell is this info? Dude, the, the, I tried to go through it during my live stream this morning, and their announcement on how this new drop system works is so freaking confusing. People on Twitter seem to understand it. I don't yeah, I, I, I said we talk about it. I mean, it kind of makes sense to me, right? Like, whatever you get on the Flashpoint, you know, next next Tuesday's drop, right? The 15th or whatever it is? Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever you get, that's what you're going to be able to access. So if you get, like, because the, the Superman is the golden, era, the golden era, right? The golden age. So whatever that is, you want to get that version of the Flashpoint 1 comic. So you, it's like a key, so you have access to go for that. You know what I mean? So if you get like a legendary, drop. so there's gonna be another drop for that on a different week, like a week later, and only the people who hold that are gonna be able to go for that drop, and that drop's gonna have Correct. five different um, rarities. Also, I don't know if that's gonna have five different rarities. Probably not. If these are like exclusive covers, I don't think they're gonna do that. I think it's gonna be like, you know, extreme animated maybe stuff or whatever. But yeah, I mean, these are like exclusive, you know, like access passes to you know. Uh, the next level of comic which i think is a great idea i mean it's not super super easy to understand i get it because like i said i i feel like i follow this shit sometimes pretty well although dc has been a little conv convoluted for me lately um yeah, this last announcement's a little bit convoluted for me even with the uh they gave us a diagram and everything and it's still quite confusing. yeah <laughs> I'm like, yeah. What are you talking about? We'll just take it one day at a time. We got the uh, we got Chrome Gate, so we'll be able to get every drop anyway. No problem. But uh, that's the thing, right? Like, how how crazy would it be? And I know it's not. That's why I'm saying, like, if there's a confirmation that's like re-release of Superman one. It is. I mean, a that does kind of suck for original holders. Um, I mean, I don't own a legendary original. I'd probably be real pissed if I did. Um, but I own the uncommon and the common. Still, I own one of each. So, you know. And if, uh, but if it turned out to be Action Comic, I would be absolutely livid that, would be that I've been holding this damn back cow, <laughs> expecting early access to Action Comics number one, and then wind up getting freaking bent over in the, at the end. True. 
Yeah, but if the uh, Superman number one, if it's the uncommon you have to hold to go for the Superman number one re-release drop, and the uncommon has a whole bunch of versions because the uncommon is the second least scarce one. So what, is there going to be like 4,000 of those and there's going to be 4,000 of the Superman number one re-releases? That's really going to hurt the value of the Superman number one, which is good in my opinion because I don't own one and I really want a Superman number one original uncommon. So hopefully it does bring down the prices. Drew Pairs asking, are we talking about DC? Yeah, this is the DC Palm stuff that's going on. It's a, a new drop system, a new drop event they got happening. It's pretty interesting with how they're doing it. Drew says, I'm surprised the showcase Flash Legendaries under 300 be more at VV, I think. I definitely think it would be more at VV. A lot of these would. <coughs> Noah says, am I planning yeah. on... Yeah. I was going to uh, talk about any other VV NFTs I plan on buying soon. I just spent a bunch of money, not a bunch, but 116 or 113 on an orange logo. But the one I have been looking at is Cat Bronson because for some reason that is all the way down to 100 gems, which is the perfect price point for me to buy one. Mo, are there any NFTs you're thinking about buying on VV um, coming up? Yeah, well, I think my plan when the Secret Red logo hits 1K, I'm going to sell that and I'm going to get... Uh, Maybe like a maybe like a Todd, or maybe I'm gonna buy like an Amazing Fantasy 15 common, and I'm gonna spend the, all the rest of the gems on America Chavez. I'm gonna complete my America Chavez shrine. We'll see if that pays off for you. You're always talking about the old America Chavez. You're gonna be America Chavez as well, and one day she's gonna blow up just like Luke Skywalker did, and you're gonna be rolling in it. You know what I'm gonna buy after I sell my red logo for a thousand? I'm buying my Aston Martin secret rare back. I miss it. And it's coming back to me soon. Noah says, Chrome Gate, what's that? You don't know what Chrome Gate is? Uh, come <laughs> by during a DC Palm drop that I'm live for, or you can check the video I did on it. It has Green Lantern on the cover. It's uh, the technique that I use for DC Palm drops. Works every time. And if you have a um, if you have a bat cow, then you go for early access and use my technique, and you get a low token ID every time. I still got my token ID 2, rare 2, from my uh, last drop that I'm selling to Adam as soon as he gets home. Big A says, I started stacking some DC 38 epics lately. Oh, epics. I've been, uh, I did stack some DC 38 uncommons. Uncommons, of course, are always my favorite. But whenever they pumped, I sold all but one and cashed in. And I got like a couple hundred, maybe 300 bucks in credit over there that I don't even know what to spend on. I was thinking about, Mo, let me know what you think about this. I haven't done it yet. I've, I've been thinking about it for a long time. But buying some of those like eight track discs i don't know what they are the first i thing know the fandom yes. the fandom uh yeah i have i dude i when i was sniping the market before they started messing with me <laughs> um yeah people would just let them go for like a dollar or two and i was stacking them and i still have a bunch of them i think because they announced utility for those a long time ago but that was like two years ago when this whole thing first like kicked off it was just yep. like you know and it was supposed to be like the computer but they still they still swear by it man and i uh, I don't know, man. They talk I don't about want the to be back like computer the... all the time, too. So it has to have, yeah. it's gonna have some type of utility at some point. I feel like I need to pick them up. Do you buy the uh, like the epics, the legendaries? Or are you just stacking commons? I just stack whatever people are just throwing away for a couple bucks. And it's like, I just want to get this out of my inventory. So like, I got it for free and I'll just sell it for four or five dollars, you know? And yeah, so most of them are the commons, you know, uncommons or rares. I definitely don't own. I always want to pick up one of the Batman and Catwoman ones with the. Like the gold <laughs> legendary one. Yeah, those That's are a cool scene. Aren't they? Yeah. I mean, when I first, you know, was dicking around, they were like forty nine ninety nine, And then, you know, <laughs> a little bit of a pump happened. And then we had some prices go up when the comics started hitting. And then, you know. Flow I mean, safe. there was, dude, there was a, there was a period of time on DC where <laughs> a lot of stuff, man. Even like the back cows were so freaking cheap, you know? You can still sometimes, if you. If you hang out on that sometimes, market, yeah, you can find some bat cows dropping for like a hundred bucks. Somebody bought one for a hundred bucks just the other day, and it had like a special attachment to it. Uh, you just got to be on there sniping out. The I just can't snipe it. that market anymore. They they just they freaking they mess with me, man. They mess with uh, the refreshes and shit. They don't like it. I get unknown errors and kicked out and yada yada yada. Try a different browser. I can actually get in, and you know. I've but a... I was I was sniping everything up until I don't know two months ago maybe when I. Kept on getting kicked out. I'm looking for the link to where Jim uh, Jim Lee describes how to do the upcoming drops for Drew in the chat. Hey, you watched it this morning, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I don't remember where I saw it at. So let me go through the likes. Maybe I liked it. See if I can find it in here somewhere. I don't know. No, that's the UFO video from Las Vegas. That stuff tripped me out, dude. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I got a chance to watch the uh, Strange Vault. Wednesday nights, like, usually my girl comes over, so it's always tough for me to hang around and watch shows, but it was nice. I watched it uh, later on that night. Yeah, that's a fun stream that we're doing every Wednesday. We're talking about UFOs and stuff, which is a perfect time, too, because there's a lot of news going on in the UFO community, the UFO world right now. Some crazy stuff is happening. Uh-oh, I went too far. There's Mo. All right, we got one minute before this race starts. The Tahoe Restricted Stakes Sprint for a long race. Let's see the horses that are in this one. The track is yielding, so the condition will not make a big difference here. We got Goldie from G5. We got Pure Strike from Hudson Stables. Daisy May from Tombstone Stables. My size is size, whatever that means, from Hudson Stables. Redu from Big Brain Stables. Good for the Soul from Golden Stables. Cherry Blossom Lane is from OEB. And then we got 50 Shades of Hay. I like it. From Metaphor Farms. <laughs> You got some good names in this race. I got to go with Daisy May 3, and I'm going to go with 50 Shades of Hay for the second place. I go with 3 8 Exacta on this race. 3 8 Exacta for me. All right, we got 20 seconds. This one's about to go down. It is a restricted stake, so some of these horses might be carrying some weight. Oh, actually, I don't think they are carrying weight in this one. Yeah, not in this one. Not in stakes <clears throat> races. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, good luck if you're in it. We're about to do the countdown. 3, 2, 1. This is ground control to Major Tom. All right, horses are at the gate. Oh, boy. A little hazy in here. Aid the gate, all line. And they're rolling here in the Tahoe Restricted Stakes. Goldie shoots out well from down at the rail. Then comes Daisy May. 50 shades of hay on the outside. And it's Eridu runs along here in fourth. Cherry Blossom Lane in fifth here in the orange silks. And my size is size. Going to round out the top leaderboard as they head around the clubhouse turn. And the only turn, as a matter of fact, in this fourth very long affair. Opening quarter in 22 and change. And hold on to your hats, chat. It's Goldie now. Takes him, try to take him home. It's Goldie now on the inside. Cherry Blossom Lane is in full stride with Daisy May. Good for the soul now. This is running like a freight train. As they pass the 100 meters, they're running out of time, running out of real estate. But it's going to be Goldie with Cherry Blossom Lane. One final push on the outside, but it's going to be Goldie at 7-1. to Getting it done, son, over Cherry Blossom Lane and Daisy May. Shouts at Goldie from G5 Stable. Took the lead and was so far out ahead that the, the other horses wow. were not able to catch him. Let's go. Good stuff from G5. That's a new stable, too. I haven't heard of that stable before. Second place went to Cherry Blossom Lane, and then old Daisy May came in third place from Tombstone Stables. Driving Miss Daisy May. Uh, is that how it goes? Maybe. I don't know. Driving Miss <laughs> Daisy. Driving Miss Daisy May. Shout out to Denny OC's in the chat. Says, got to run. Have a great night. Thanks, my man. Appreciate you hanging out with us. Drew's pair. Have a good didn't night, know I had a horse. Drew, you already got a horse? I didn't know you had a horse either. We got the Jade Emperor Allowance coming up next. A lot of horses in this race. Goes off in four minutes. It's raining. Condition is soft. And it's nine furlongs. Looks like all soft horses in here too. So that shouldn't affect much. And uh, let's see what else we got going on tonight. The Agricultural Allowance is almost full with ten horses in that bad boy. Then we got the Antiquity Eesh. Stakes. All right. We got some good races coming up. Mo, uh, do you buy any new Cryptoids boxes? I know you were on the live stream with them and you opened up one last night. How's it looking over there on Cryptoids? You excited for it? I am, and it's just because it's just fun to me, man. Like, again, it's just, there's always going to be the comparison, right, with the VB and the Cryptoids or whatever. I don't really care. I mean, the VB, whatever, it should be more like a showcase museum type of deal, especially early on. Sure. But, you know, Cryptoids, I think it's just going to be fun. You know, like, grab your character, run around, earn some in-game currency. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you, me and you could be sitting there on Cryptoids playing air hockey against each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, in between races, we got to kill some time. You know, like, I just think it'll be... that like, When you had that conversation with Will, and you, you did a good job on that interview, by the way, like, asking the good questions and, you know, having a good, good back and forth. It was interesting because we talked about, like, the carnival games and, like, those quick those quick types of experiences, like the Flappy Bird they're working on, you know what I'm saying, with the mobile app. Yep. Like that, I think that's just how you do it, especially early on. You just give people all these little experiences and like pieces and pieces. 
Because that's what gaming did for a long time, especially VR. You got like these VR experiences and now you start to see VR games and worlds because people understand like how it works and how people, you know, interact with it. So I think this is going to be the same thing. So I think they have a better approach and it's just fun, man. Like seeing them in the package and I don't know. Like It does seem fun. The mini games are definitely going to be big. I can't wait for the play sets. I think the play sets is going to add a whole new level to it too. Those are going to be dope. Oh, for sure. Crypto Did you ever have one of the... Uh... Like the me, Castle Grey Skulls or the Eternia? Not only did I day? have one when I was a kid, and I definitely had the Grey Skull one. I had plenty of them when I was a kid. I still look for them at yard sales to resell on eBay. That's a good call. Yeah, dude, that was um, that was like the biggest uh Christmas gift I ever got as a kid. That thing was gigantic. Remember the size of the box yes. on like the whole like this was like the whole Castle Grey Skull with all like the attachments. You had like Snake Mountain came with it, like the big the big set. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, I would love. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be I'd say awesome I'd love to get my hands on it, but then I'm like, "What the hell am I gonna do with it? I'm not gonna set it up and freaking play with it." But um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I got a kid, so I can talk my kid into playing with it and pretend that's like true. it's for him. That's, <laughs> <true>. <laughs> that's why I got that was Hero Quest game to pretend like it's for him, so I can play it. All right, that's a good. That's good. <laughs> I hit up my boy. I was like, "Yo, I'm like, you know, if your mom still got those uh, Hero Quests in the closet, that was some pretty sure they." So Pretty sure they sold that house. I mean, maybe oh, she no. still has them or put them away, but yeah, yeah I don't think uh, I don't think she lives there anymore. Let me catch up with but, the chat. Doozy says there's yeah. a leaderboard coming to Cryptoys. They will do everything, but if they like doing everything right, yeah, I'm gonna like the. Oh, I'm not personally, but I, the the leaderboard in particular is gonna have people buying more and more because they're gonna want to get on the top of that. And there's already some wells in the community. I forget who it was yeah. last night. I think it was one of the Comic and Cryptos guys had like a ton of them. Jeff says, oh, yeah. I, I was so hyped about more Cryptoids during the live stream, then saw Mo and Hype, Hype died. <laughs> Did Mo kill your hype? Was it his commons? Whoa. <laughs> oh, whoa, Jeff. You should have watched Cal Wilson. He, he opened a grail on the stream last night. Ronnie Lido says, I want Cryptoids, but I want a different IP. What is out now? I'm not interested. I'm telling you, bro, they're going to drop Disney Princesses. It's going to break the app or break the website. Disney Princesses on Cryptoids would be wild. Drew Pear says, I'm running up to the corner store. Anyone need anything? Can you give me a, a cigarillo? No, I'm just kidding. Ronnie Lytle says, Yeah, oh. I was like, give me a, let me get a green leaf. Get a black I'll see you, Vega. A little black and mild. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to spend money on a video game for 40 bucks, I'm going to want a character I associated with more than what's out now. Well, if you, there's a lot of Star Wars fans, maybe you, but there's plenty of Star Wars fans out there that are hyped to try to get the Darth Vader or the Luke Skywalker. I don't know about Leia, but she is the first appearance on the blockchain. All right, guys, it's time for the Jade Emperor Allowance Nine Furlong Race. Getting ready to go down. Let's get the countdown going. Three, two, one, click. All right. This in sync racing brought to you by OG Vault. Killing it with the timing today. Good job. All right. Horses at the gate. Shout out to Pro Comey. They said that, and now it's frozen. And announcer jinx. <laughs> and they're up here. I'll give you my best radio call. Cameroon trots along here on the outside. Discord newcomer there down low. Legacy in between horses runs alongside Space Horse and comes stronger down to Pink Silks, followed by Morning Breeze. Morning Breeze at 6.87 to 1, runs along here in sixth. Now moves up into fifth as a shootout. Head out to shoot even onto the main track and into the clubhouse turn. And it's back 40, stable runner, Cameroon, showing the way here and opens up by two. Then comes Legacy. Discord newcomer as I'm starting to lose my voice and need to take a sip of water. Creeper there is on the inside, might have clipped heels with Space Horse on the way by. Space Horse carrying five pounds though, starts to make a run here with the leader as they head around the turn here and now to the back stretch. Legacy, Legacy by two. Discord newcomer there off the rail now taps on the brakes. Reaper tries to move up on the outside. Says, you ain't creeping around my house no more. But it's Creeper. Creep creeping. Tries to pull up alongside Discord Newcomer once again. And goes by this time to take over second. They're all chasing Legacy. Legacy here up front. And right on cue, the Creeper's going to go right on by. And now Creeping is going to creep on by for the lead. Legacy drops back to second. Cameroon there on the outside. But in the fourth path. Has some room here. Good enough. But Creeper, Creeper by two and a half, trying to show them how it's done here in the Jade Emperor Lounge. Three quarters and 115. And into the far turn we go now. 
The Creeper, the Creeper by two, but this lead is dwindling as Cameroon cuts the turn like a prize champ. And now it's Cameroon who pokes the nose in front and goes right on by down the center of the track. Cameroon by two, down low, it's future mother with morning breeze. But it's past the eighth pole we go, and it's a one-horse show, and it's going to be all Cameroon over future mother and morning breeze. Shout out to Back 40 Stable gets the win with the long shot. Long shot in first place, long shot in second place in that race. So kind of an unexpected uh, result there. And I was also not able to pick a horse to bet on on that race either. It's too busy talking. Let me get ready for the next race and see if we got some good horses to choose from. If you're just joining us, we've been live since about 5.55. Our horse started off the day with a win. Our Dow horse got a victory today. So I'm super pumped. I've been hyped the whole time on that one. Right? Yeah, that was awesome, man. My horse has been getting their hit handed to him for uh, two days now. Oh, really? But... I saw where one of your horses had got their third victory and you tweeted about it. Yeah, well, maybe I got to stop tweeting about it because <laughs> you know what they say about NFTs when it's good enough to take a picture of it, it's good enough to sell it. Yeah, I should probably uh, stop sending out barn updates whenever my freaking horse would do well because, yeah, I've been getting absolutely hammered and I'm I'm not sure if it's because, you know, I think a lot of people might stop just running horses just for the hell of it. Um, I know a lot of people were stacking crown, you know, so it was running horses wrong directions, you know, against preferences or whatever. So maybe just, you know, maybe now the competition is, you know, more legit. <clears throat> or, you know, maybe it's just the variance of the horses, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, if you have a zero tempo horse, technically it should run like a Zed run horse did. Remember when Zed Run people used to look for those U-shaped horses, right? Oh, so yeah. yep. you either, you wanted a horse that you ran, you know, first or last. You didn't want a horse that had like that peak in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Right. That was like that was like a bullshit horse. You wanted that U-shaped horse where it's high up in the front three positions, or it just had the worst race of its life, which meant it had like a high variance, but you know, it was just hit or miss basically, hot and cold. And I think that's you know you can play that angle here in this game too. Problem is when you run into the situation like I am. Or I might be hitting the low end of the variance on like all my best horses, and you know, some of the races are eight eight bucks, but some of them are like you know twelve, fifteen, seventeen dollars, and it adds up. Definitely adds up. Yeah, yeah, it definitely adds up if you only got like one horse too. I know you got multiple horses, so you're getting some wins and some losses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of <laughs> sixteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it adds up if you're not winning with any of them for sure. All right, let's check out this 12 furlong race that's going down in four minutes. It looks like it was a race that had 80% chance of raining. So all these people with soft horses put their horse in it, but it didn't rain. It came out as a dry track. It's a good surface, so this should be interesting with all these soft horses. Uh, some of them are carrying some extra weight. So let's see who we're going to bet on. We got Mexicali Blues in the one spot from Costa Nostra Racing. We got Didymus, Sir Didymus from Trust in Him Stables. Title Town from Unsolicited Stables. We got Haiti from HHR Genetics. Frog Tards from Ribbit Stables. I don't know what a frog tard is, but it doesn't sound good. It sounds offensive <laughs> to frogs. Abbey Road from Big Grain Stables. We got Arkansas from Hog Heaven Stables. Wildly un Understated from Rinsed Out Racing. Monster Zeros from Star Shoes. Never seen that stable before. It's got a good record, too. And then Sun Salutation from Intense Stables. Another stable I never heard of. I like this. Uh, oops. Monster Zero with four wins in five seconds and 20 races. That's pretty impressive. That's probably going to be the horse that I expect to win. So I'm going to go with the nine. Ooh, I don't, I don't like the name of that horse or else I would pick it. I like its stats, but I don't like the name of it. B plus over here. We got some B minuses. Keep in mind that the uh, B pluses are going to be carrying some weight. The Bs will be carrying three pounds. B pluses should be carrying six. And B minuses will be carrying zero. I'm going with the 9-2 exacto on this one. 9-2. We're going to get Didymus in there. I think Didymus might pull up and surprise some people. It's a 12 furlong race, so it's a distance race. It's going to be a long one. So I hope Mo is ready for this. Plenty of horses to call, though. Mo yeah, is... at least it's not a four-horse race, so hopefully we'll get... Uh... <laughs> a four-horse race with uh, 12 furlongs. That would be rough. Let's see where Crypto Dudes yeah. is in. He's got, one, he's got the one horse in first place, the six horse in second. And wildly understated in third, one six eight trifecta. Anything coming up this weekend that you're excited about, Mo? Uh, mm. <coughs> no, not really. I just been. I'm really just looking forward to breeding, man. I think we're gonna hit a really, 
exciting time. I'm seeing like new barns pop up still every day, new people in Discord. Um, I'm seeing like Twitter posts about people in other games selling barns and selling assets to kind of like, you know, make their way to this ecosystem. So I think when the, you know, when some new blood comes in and then those people attached to those people might start seeing what's happening. Yeah, it's just going to get really exciting, man. And that's why I think, you know, for me, having five Phillies, you know, it was beneficial to me, obviously. But, you know, also beneficial to, you know, our, our Dow, right? Like, if I want to try to get some, some blood over there, I do have some good blood. And especially, you know, with some of the male horses that'll be out there, I try to primarily focus on, you know, good Phillies and kind of decent racing uh, Colts. That was like my, just kind of like smart. my idea, but... Yeah, I'm excited to have some breeding, but we still got a few weeks before that happens. Checking out the Belmont Stakes. Shout out to Crypto Doozy for reminding me the Belmont Stakes is going down soon. Why is Mage not in this? What happened to Mage? I don't see Mage in it. Forte is the favorite at 5-2. to two. Angel of Empires, the horse that I liked in the Derby, is 7-2. to two. Anybody... Yeah, I haven't followed horse racing at all since Photo Finish. What happened in the Preakness? Really, since like the beginning of the year. I mean, a little bit of the Preakness and Derby, but obviously with the game but outside of that i don't really even know who the hell's doing what let's see who won the 2023 preakness it was national treasure okay i wonder what happened to uh mage i thought mage was going for the triple crown thanks for hanging out with us ronnie lido ronnie lido's working where do you work at ronnie lido in uh las vegas i know you're a magician do you do ma magician magicianery magicianery are you a, a professional magician? We're just talking about mage, anyway. Crypto Doozy says two horse wins the Belmont race. Oh, the two horse. I thought you were gonna say two horses win at the same time, like a photo finish. That'd be interesting. What would they do? Yeah. <laughs> well, they wouldn't promote photo finish because they have a <laughs> they have a license and a backing from a completely different game. Oh, that's not good. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, click. Okay. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, got a good one coming at you here on Photo Finish Live, Night of the Races. Ten horse field, locked and loaded. And they're racing here in the agriculture allowance. And it's Frogtar is going to break best of all here from between horses. And on the outside comes Wildly Understated and Monster Zero. Toe and toe, Mono with Swan. Another break of two. There comes Mexicala Blues down at the rail. We're in front of Title Town and then Arkansas. Arkansas is going to round out the top leaderboard here as they shoot down here into the clubhouse turn. Opening quarter in 25 and change. Slow pace here up front for the leader. That's Frog Tards carrying them extra five pounds too, but not being affected here in the early going. It continues to show the way now by three and a half. Frogtar still leads the way here. Then Title Town down at the rail. Hanging out down low with a ground saving trip. Haiti starts to split him in between horses early. Don't want to make that move too early here, but here goes Monster Zero and Abbey Road, followed by Mexicala Blue still down there at the rail. But might be fading here in the early going. Not quite sure what happened there for Mexicala Blues. They're trying to hold on here from Didymus. Dewey, Diddy Didymus, as they pass the wire here for the first time. Half mile and 52 and change. This pace is sluggish, chat. But I don't think Mexicali Blues likes my comments whatsoever because that horse went from the back to the front in the flash of an eye and now has been taken over once again by Wildly Understated. And now it's Wildly Understated up top with Mexicali Blues down below. <clears throat> I am absolutely losing my voice. It's been an insane week. But Monster, Monster Zero is in third here, followed by a Sun Salutation. Didymus still there down low, looking for room here with Arkansas on the outside. But we got plenty of racing here as we're across the pond, down the back stretch. And we do want to thank you, every single one of you in chat for watching the races here every Friday night. Don't forget to like the stream and follow the channel for all things photo finish on Friday nights. One mile and 144 and change. New leader is now Didymus. Didymus, Vault's favorite here in the pregame. Might be giving it some life here as Didymus now pushes forward to 15 to 1. Mexicali Blues backs off down the rail. Title Town starts to accelerate here with a whole nother level of speed, but might not have enough to catch this leader as Didymus is starting to sneak away from him. Streetlights on and Mama's calling. They're heading home. And now it's Didymus 
opens up with every stride, but down the center of a track, insert coin, here comes new challenger, and that challenger is wildly understated, and I can't even overstate this, but Didymus is too strong here in the late stages of the game. It's going to be Didymus over wildly understated, and sun salutations. A long shot. Didymus from Trust in Him Stables gets wow. the win over Wildly Understated from Rinsed Out Racing in second place. Nice victory over there for Sir Didymus. We have a uh, NFT on the VB app called Sir Didymus. Did you know that? I did not. That's also why I don't play uh, VB Trivia, although I do watch. <laughs> I just don't partake. It's true. We do. Oh, we got another race starting in 25 seconds prepare yourselves and this is a grade one a big boy race on a sloppy track the antiquity stakes with three s tier horses and one s minus horse with a bad attitude in this race i'm going with a two three exacta we're about to give you the countdown good luck if you're in it let's go three two one click All right, we are back. It's time for a grade one major race here on Night of the Races. Massive four horse field. All locked up. And they're off in the Antiquity Stakes. And it's General Duke. General Duke's going to pop out along with the Rock of Cashel. Bad attitude there, also in the early going. And it's Ja Ja Ding Dong. Ja Ja Ding Dong is going to round out the top of the quartet here as they head out the chute now and on to the main track in the seven furlong left turning up there in the dirt. And it's all up front early with General Duke and Rock of Cashel as these two are battling it out. Bad attitude though has had enough and wants to take a shot here as a leader and goes right on by down at the rail. Found room. Now it's bad attitude the one to catch. Bad attitude by two. General Duke there is going to just stalk the pace here evenly on the outside. Another break of two and a half. There comes Rock of Cashel and Zha Zha Ding Dong. No urgency there on the backside. Might be chasing butterflies. Not sure how many butterflies are out here in the rainy days, but we'll just try to find a solid excuse so that horse can race another day. Round the far turn we go now. It's half mile and 48 change, and it's almost time for the money shot. And bad attitude. Bad attitude. Touch the corner like a pro. Bad attitude by two and a half. General Duke is off the rail now and trying to challenge. Rock of Cashel has found final form, but will it be enough here as Bad Attitude still shows the way? Past the eighth pole, Bad Attitude on the inside. Rock of Cashel on the outside with one final surge. Looking for a perfect move. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. From downtown, it's going to be Rock of Cashel. Rock the cash bar over Bad Attitude and Ja Ja Ding Dong. The last second move from Balthazar Holy Rangers. Holy crap. I thought the long shot was gonna win it. I thought Crypto Doozy. I was about to be. Uh, I was about to believe your conspiracy theory about Doozy going out and finding out the results. <laughs> How did he call another long shot? But no, Rack of Cashel saved it and came in and got that victory at the last second. Neither one of the two horses that I picked, by the way, got first or second. All right, Mo. It's seven thirty. You want to call it a night? Uh, yeah, I didn't think it was one at 7.35. You want to yeah, watch that one? one more, not, 7.35, we can... then, then we got a uh, break all the way to 8. So we'll just do one more race tonight. It starts in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. It's the City Beautiful Handicap. Only four horses in it, but we got a Hamster Wheel horse, and you know we love those. We got the horse Hamster Wheel from RVA Racing. We got Saruman's nephew. I think that's the wizard from Lord of the Rings. I could be wrong. We got Kush Mints, which sounds like an edible from Hazy Hills. And honesty, honesty from Golden Boot Stables. The track is yielding. Four furlong sprint. Before I look to see who Crypto Doozy is choosing, let me make my choices first. I'm going four one, and I'm sticking with it. Four one exacta is my pick. I'm even gonna go with the trifecta and put Saruman's nephew in there. Four one two trifecta to end the night. Crypto Doozy says, "How would I know the winners? Are these pre-recorded or something?" Um, no, there's probably some way to hack it if you're a hacker. <laughs> you get in there, and as soon as it starts, well, not first... necessarily hack it, but like sometimes the timers might be a little different. Like when, when Vault's timer gets down to zero, sometimes I even have like 12, 13, 14 seconds, right? Oh, so really? if I, yeah, if I, but if I refresh when you count it down, I still get the window, even though on my screen it's like eight to 10 seconds. But yeah, I, no one really. It might just be busting chops crypto, but back in the betas, there was a way where people would like refresh it and it would just 
Because the way this game works, um, and they're transparent about this, and they have to be because these had you know these races have to be audited, you know, to make sure that they're legit and not being manipulated. Sure. So, yeah. So they're basically you know that's why the wind the betting windows have to close ten minutes before the race, uh, because those you know the races take I think they said like eight minutes or something to generate oh, to see. do all the yeah. So you know so it takes time for these races to hit the server. But what was happening in the beta was that sometimes races would hit. So if you refresh the page, you could just fast forward in the replay. Because oh, yeah. technically they're already uploaded. Remember that? <laughs> yep. Yeah, you could pull that yeah. uh, bar across. That's true. I got you. Yeah. So I, if anything, people might just be belts and chops. But I was only joking earlier. I was. I don't really care. But I would hope nobody would spoil the fun. <laughs> well, yeah, we're just having fun. All right. I got the yeah. uh, 412 traffic on this. That's who I'm going with. I think Honesty always wins isn't that what my mom told me growing up honesty always wins so i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with mama's advice if i had some money i'd put it on it all right this is gonna be the last race of the night we do this every friday night so we'll be back again next friday night what time we go live will depend on the uh the schedule usually around six or seven three two one click okay in there like swimwear and the servers have been running well that's been nice. <coughs> oh, jeez. Time for the nightcap chat, even though it's still sunny outside here. Night the races will be coming to a close, and they're off in their city beautiful handicap. Hamster Wheel breaks best of all from down to rail and flies out to a quick two-length lead. Pushman's there as well, then comes Honesty and Saruman's nephew, Gonna take up the rear here as they head around the first and only turn. And this four furlong right turning a fair in the dirt. Amps the wheel with Cushman's. These two are gonna try to duke it around the turn. And it's only these two quarter mile and 23 and change. But hold up. Wait a minute. It's Saruman's nephew trying to resurge from the depths of hell. But that will be instantly shut down as Honesty. Honesty is trying to show that nice guys do not always finish last. And it's trying to take this one for all the guys, all the nice guys. But this will also prove that nice guys may not always finish last. But sometimes they finish second too. As Hamster Wheel is going to win this one over Honesty and Cushman's. Honesty was not the best policy in this race. I thought <laughs> Honesty had it, but could not hold on to the lead. We got the victory there from the, let's see what this horse's name was. I was looking at Honesty the whole time. It was Hamster Wheel. Hamster Wheel got the win from RVA Racing. Another win for RVA. Honesty is second. Cushman's is third. Before we uh, end the stream, though, Mo, how's it looking over there in New York? Is it orange? I keep seeing the pictures of the orange New York. Uh, Yeah, I mean, so... I'm in Long Island. Uh, we didn't really have that type of craziness where, like, you saw everything on Twitter where it's, like, uh, orange skies and you can only see, like, 100 feet. Yeah, look um, cool. Some areas where, vis you know, the visibility was kind of shot, like, off the coast of Long Island. But, yeah, I mean, honestly, yesterday was good um, or better. Today has been fine. Even though they still, I think they had a warning. I think they had, like, a, still an air quality warning, but probably just being safe, you know. Apparently but, yeah, man, there's... it was pretty crazy out in the city, dude. It, I bet. <laughs> That shit was pretty wild, man. Apparently, there was some smoke even down here in Indiana. Somebody was mentioning it on Facebook in my town, and they're like, that's the smoke from Canada. So, yeah, it's weird. Every time I say, you're from New York, you're like, I'm from Long Island. Is not is Long Island not part of New York anymore? Or It is, it is <laughs> but people automatically assume when I say I'm from New York that, like, I walk out of my house and I have subways and bus stops that and, like, what I assume. you know what I'm saying, like, buildings. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, guys, we're going to end the live stream right here. This is Friday Night Racing. Like I said, we do this every Friday night with me and Mo. So make sure you come back and hang out with us next Friday night as well. And we will see you then. Thanks, Mo, for co-hosting with me. Great job calling the races, bro. Yeah, man. Appreciate you uh, co-hosting as well. And always fun. Have a good night, chat. Take it easy. Later.